everyone, my name's Jen, for those of you who don't know me. Um, and I just kind of want to come on here and talk a little bit about um, not putting God in a box. And I just need you to forgive me because I'm really, my brain is a little bit foggy. Not bad, but I've been up all night. I'm fasting sleep right now um, just for the night. Then I plan on going to sleep at my regular time. Um, you know, it's kind of a bring my flesh under submission thing. Um, you know, God will kind of bring us to do that sometimes. And uh, anyway, um, I just kind of want to talk about, you know, not putting God in a box. Um, sometimes God will ask us to do things and, and we'll think, really? Is that, is that coming from God? You know, and well, it may very well be, you know, pray about it. Um, you know, God has asked me to do things or, you know, put it in my mind and, you know, I prayed about it, you know, like he'll put a word in my mind or, you know, an, I, a, an image, you know, and also and, and different things like that. And, um, you know, one of the ways that I put him in a box was, and I didn't intentionally do it, but I was doing it at, subconsciously s somewhat. Um, like in my mind, I had this thought that, and I don't know why I thought this, but that if, you know, God, ha you know, not really so meanly as it's going to sound, that's not really the way I mean it, but like God would have me dressed like a nun. You know, I thought I kind of envisioned that in my mind that, that if God, you know, so I kind of didn't want to involve him in that area which I had him like in every other part of my life except for that part. And I guess because I was afraid <laughs> that he would have me dressed like that. So anyway, he really, he came to me about that and really revealed to me that he, he wants to enjoy that with me. He wants to enjoy that with me. He doesn't want me dressing like a nun. He wants, he wants me to have fun and enjoy uh, dressing up for the day you know, doing my hair. Um, I like to do the 50s era. If you've seen any other my other videos, you can kind of tell. And um, I, uh, you know, I just like to dress kind of 50s and um, just kind of a new thing I started, you know, a few months back. Um, and I really am having fun with it. And he just really revealed to me that he wants to enjoy that with me. He wants to be a part of that. And he doesn't want me to close him out. I mean, he already you know, he doesn't want me to close, he, he was already blessing me anyway, um, but I was like, oh, wow, okay, wow, you know, so I was really surprised, and that's just where I put him in a box, you know, we can do that in like many different ways, we can put him in, in a box with you know, what he asks us to do, you know, our hair, um, you know, I met a guy once who actually ended up on television. I can't remember his name, but I guess he was on television to tell his testimony. And he was a big, uh, burly biker guy and, um, had tattoos and everything. And, and I mean, I could feel the Holy Spirit when I was talking to this man and his wife was with him and I could just really feel the Holy Spirit. So I, I just knew you know, you can tell, you know, if you're very close to Christ, you can feel when the Holy Spirit is present, and it's just amazing. But, I mean, he he said God told him, don't cover up the tattoos. You can go places I can't go. And, you know, because we're the vessel for him to work through us. So, you know, he, he so he, he even went to church, he goes to church just wearing sleeveless shirts and stuff like that. He doesn't cover it up, just like the Lord told him. And, um, uh, I think that's awesome because, you know, had he not listened to that, he would have kept God in a box, you know, and and he wouldn't be able to reach people that need need to be reached through someone like him, you know, and, you know, that looks like him. Because, you know, if you get a guy in a, in a suit, you know, going in, you know, a you know, going in a crowd of bikers, there it's and it's just not going to mesh very well. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just all about not putting God in a box. He could, he could call you to do 
many things. Um, I don't know, color your hair, wear your makeup a certain way, uh, dress a certain way, and he could call you and it, he won't, you know, he's not going to call you to do something, uh, first of all, that he won't equip you to do, um, but anything he's called me to do, I, I enjoy doing it. I, he, I love doing it. And it's just, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, yeah, he's had me do some things that, you know, like give messages to people and I was just like afraid they were going to think I was nuts and then it turned out okay, but, <laughs> you know, but other things, you know, like he could call you to do anything and not just that, but bless you in the things that you just enjoy, you know, whether it's dogs, riding a motorcycle, whether it's, you know, clothes or whatever your job is. You know, he wants to be in every inch of your life because he wants to enjoy it with you because he is love. He loves you and he, he created this earth and he gave us imagination so we could enjoy what he has given us. He wants to enjoy us enjoying it. So I hope, I hope that, uh, that maybe you'll pray and say, Lord, show me where I may be putting, keeping you in a box because I want to let you out. <laughs> I pray this, this message, um, blesses you and, you know, I just, I hope that everyone, everyone who watches this video and really just everyone in the world just does whatever they can to draw closer to the Lord because it's just so amazing. I can't explain, I just can't explain the depth of love and I mean, it runs deep. It's amazing. And I just kind of want to tell a story. And I hope that you get the depth of this. I know it's a lot different hearing it than it is actually experiencing it. And this was all God. It was amazing. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i end it after the story. But um, I love mimosa trees. Because when I was a little girl, I got to spend a week with my dad um, when he lived in Louisiana. And, um, I don't remember where all we went. I was, I was really young. I don't think I was quite in kindergarten yet. Um, it might have been right before I started kindergarten. And I didn't get to see him much. He was in the army at the time, I think, or he just came out. And then, um, not long after that, my mom took us and hit us from my dad. Just so you know a little bit about my history. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't get to grow up with my dad in my life. Um, so this... This one week that I spent with my dad, I've always cherished it in my heart. But he took me around. He had fixed my hair and dressed me up. And he took me around to all his friends showing me off. And I remember we pulled into this one place. And he had a, a we both had a cup. And we had drink, drank all of our stuff all gone. And we just had ice left. And it was a crushed ice, kind of like what you get at Sonic. It was just that crushed ice. And he was taking his straw. He had his finger on the top of the straw. Um to keep it suctioned and he was like pushing it down in the ice and so the ice was getting impacted in the straw and then he would suck it out and I was like so excited I wanted to learn how to do that so he was showing me how and we were parked I think at one of his friends house or something and there was a mimosa tree this this moment to me was beautiful there was a mimosa tree in full bloom and it just smelled beautiful and if you don't know what a mimosa tree is google it um, I'm sure you've seen one. They have like little pink pom-pom looking flowers and it just smelled heavenly. It was just the, the, the aroma that I think dad's, my dad's window was kind of cracked about this far and the aroma just filled the car. And I remember that moment. It was just so special to me. It was me and him and and he was just showing me something that was so special to a little kid, you know, and it was just a beautiful memory. And um, God pulled that right out of my heart. And he knew in my heart I love mimosa trees. And I know that I knew this came from God. He just gave me that knowing. I don't know how to explain it other than that. He just gave me a knowing or, or a revelation. Um, it's just like 
he downloaded it into me or something. I don't know. But I have a wooden deck in my backyard and there's the steps are wooden too. And so you can see like there's a step and then there's a space that goes like under the porch and a step and a space, um, a gap or whatever. And one day I realized there was a mimosa tree growing down in between the steps and it was coming out through the steps trying to get light. And I was amazed. I was like, how in the world is there a mimosa tree growing there? So I, God gave me that knowing that it was from him. Now I had to work a little bit for it. I had to, it was really hard to get it out. I tried with the shovel, the angle it was at, I couldn't get it. You know, it was underneath that step and everything and I just couldn't really get it like that. So I was just like kind of feeling, oh man, I don't know how to do this other than just pull it. You know, I, I think I got it a little loose. And so when I did pull it, it ripped off every root except for the main root and the main root was only like this long and the mimosa tree was probably about this tall and um, I was like oh no I just thought oh my gosh I really hope this makes it so I put it in a pot and I I stuck it um, I stuck it on the front porch because it was spring and I watered it and I I stood right in the out, out in the open and I prayed over it and I was like Lord please please, you know, bring this, this tree to, to thrive and live. And it was, I was nervous. It was all the leaves fell off and it just looked like a stick. And, uh, it was probably like a month or more. I think it was more than a month. Finally, I started seeing buds. I didn't give up. I just like, every time I, I would have a doubtful thought in my mind, I would say, no, nope, I prayed and I'm going to believe that this tree is going to come back to life because I'm trusting God, you know, and, and so it did. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I could believe it, but I was just like ecstatic about it. I was like, wow, you know, and, um, I'm sorry, I'm going into like deep detail about this, but I really kind of want to get you to get the picture that I really had to work that tree and I had to have faith. I had to have faith. For it to thrive and live and um, so I was sitting there at the, my table one day and God spoke to me it was about Christmas time at this time and this by this time the tree it was probably you know about this wide and it was really in full the, all the leaves were full and it was close to Christmas time and the Lord spoke to me and he said give the tree to your father for Christmas and I was, at first I was like, what? I thought it was for me. And he, you know, he just really wanted me to give it to my dad. And I, at first I didn't understand. And um, so at first, yeah, I'm going to admit my feelings were a little bit hurt because I was like, but I thought it was for me, <laughs> you know. And it really, it really was, but it was also for my father. I just didn't know that at the time. So then later, my I was riding to church with my pastor's wife, and she she told me I told her about the tree, and she told me um, by this time I was okay with it, and she she said I'm getting something I'm getting something from the something from the Holy Spirit, write a letter to your dad about the tree. So I wrote a letter to go with the tree about, and it was called um, this. The story of a little girl and the mimosa tree, or something like that. Sorry, my alarm's going off. <laughs> Time to get up for work. Anyway, I already had my shower, so I'm good. Um, so my, the uh, so I I wrote this the letter, and what I wrote it about was that memory of me and him in the car and how this, the aroma just filled that car and how it was such a beautiful memory and how the little girl just looked up to him, you know, I put it in like I was in third party in, the, in there and, and I gave it to my dad and he was amazed. And then later, well that day also, well first I'm going to tell you that my dad said that 
he loved mimosa trees, and I didn't know this, but his dad had a mimosa tree growing in his yard, and, you know, it was like a connection with him and his dad, and a beautiful memory also with him and his dad. And then later, he, Heavenly, the Heavenly Father revealed to me that, um, I just thought it was beautiful, that the mimosa tree connects me and my dad and his dad. And it was just amazing. I mean, I was, I was awed by that. I was awed by that and I was also awed by how, I was just wowed by how he did it all. Like he grew a tree in my backyard, had me use my faith you know, and, and, and had me, had the tree come from me, which actually was from the father, but, but he connected us all together with this mimosa tree. So now this mimosa tree is growing in my dad's yard. I mean, it, it was just amazing. I don't know how to put it in words any better than that, but how it was all connected. I mean, wow. So don't put him in a box. He's amazing. And his way of thinking is much higher than ours, and it's much deeper, and it's much wider, and it's much more beautiful, and it's just the depth of love is amazing. And I just, I haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> I've seen nothing yet. When we get to heaven, it's going to be amazing. I mean, beyond our comprehen comprehension here on earth, it's just going to be amazing. God bless. Bye.